Do you know the 4th of July is a celebration of this country's independence? Are you aware of that? I am. You are? You know what, what happened in July 4th, 1776? Really okay, because it doesn't sound like you're even talking about the patriotism that undergirds it. You said that it was not a political event. So why is the Republican National Committee giving out tickets to supporters of the president? Why are those going This is This is a public event. It's open to the public. The public is welcome to come and celebrate our great country, the greatest democracy. Uh, the Constitution, all the amendments, not just the First Amendment that seems to only inter interest you only, the Second Amendment, all the others, but really just the birth of this country, the greatest democracy that ever lived. Well, I'm not going to allow you to politicize it. Kellyanne, help us out. There are some concerns. Obviously, you've heard there are concerns among some of the president's critics that it is putting politics or partisanship over patriotism. The president just yesterday was asked if he could give a speech that would reach all Americans, and in his answer, he said of the Democrats that their health care plan would destroy the country. It didn't seem to sort of give that sense Well, both of, are true at the same time. He actually, you're not giving his full response, which is irresponsible of you. I, I'll read the whole I, response. I, we'll do it do right that. now. You should do that. You should do that because otherwise it sounds like the president's critics are standing right here and not somewhere else. So go ahead. We'll the give you time. The, the president was the asked, response, can you give a please. speech? The president was asked, can you give a speech that will reach all Americans? Okay, I'll pull up the whole Hogan response. and I were in the Oval when he said it. So it's going to take you a while because you came here only to give a partial I'm response. Gonna I'm going to read it to you right now. This is too important. I'm glad to sit. We have all day. Partial information is misinformation. Is. Ready? He said, I think so. I think so. And then he said, I think I've reached most Americans. Most Americans want no crime. Most Americans want a strong military. They want good education. Do you disagree they with any of that? They want good health care. You look at pre-existing conditions. The Republicans are going to save pre-existing conditions, even True. though even though they voted to undercut Obamacare. The Democrats won't be able to did do the it. President the president say that or did you just slip that in? Hold I'm on. I'm saying. I'm no, no, no. Let America know okay, that here. you're slipping in your editorial Killian, comments. Do not finish. say you're quoting the President of the United States I didn't and slip in, that in an moment. editorial I was giving comment. You a positive Tell us which ellipses are yours. Here it is. What the Democrats Because I don't think it's your job to slip that in, but go ahead. Killian. What this man was never said Kellyanne. under Con no, no, no. This man was never said under Congressman Trump. He's never voted to undercut Obamacare. But you know Kellyanne. what? You know what annoys him? He wasn't and you talking know about himself. He was building? talking about the Republicans, which is what I said. Twenty-eight Here's million Kellyanne, Americans you asked have me to no read the quote, which is what None. I'm doing. The Zero. president said, "What the Democrats' plan is going to destroy the country and is going to be horrible health care." Oh, so the right. president, when asked in the very question when he was asked if he could speak to all Americans, said the Democrats' health care plan was going to destroy Americans. Is that a political statement or is that a patriotic statement? That's a factual statement and you know it and here's why. And thank you for reading the whole thing because you didn't come here to do that. And folks, please stop saying you want to have better relationships so that I always try to have great relationships with you. This is why we're here. But you cannot take one little nugget out of a full presidential response where he's saying, I think most Americans want no crime, want a strong military, want education, want a good economy and jobs. She took all of that out just to have a negative, toss it at me like a Molotov cocktail and hope that you get to be on the nightly news tonight. A Molotov cocktail? Or, 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 yes. Kelly, I asked you a that. question. The question Give is the full simple. response. The president said a lot. No, the question is not simple. The question is loaded, but I can handle it. And here's my answer to you. you I'm glad you read the entire response. Medicare for all is a disaster. Nonpartisan actuaries and other professionals say it would destroy our health care system. 180 million people, is the president apparently, talk including about Medicare you, do you have private health in insurance through NBC Universal. Kellyanne, is the president I assume that about you do. I assume Kellyanne, that you and your wife and your American. children don't want to make it I'm about you. You make it about me so much, I'm going to talk I about I didn't even say about you. you. I'm talking minute. about the president. Kellyanne, I, let's be clear. Is the president going to talk about Medicare for all You're not letting me answer the question about. You're not going to let me. You're not going to answer. How about a preview of his speech? What's he going to be saying? Yeah, but there were a couple articles previewing his speech today. I read. It. I think it's great, but you'll what you do is you wait for the one half a line in the speech that you think. Ah, how is this? How is this? We're asking how is this what he's going to say, Kellyanne. He doesn't want to talk about the policy of health care. One of the people in this building who has the, who has the pen on health care. I want to ask for the speech. Plan. That's what we're asking. There's two op eds today. You can read. You probably won't. But one is but in the Dallas at. Morning News. One's in the Wall Street Journal. The Dallas Morning News one talks about the president is for transparency and a whole lot more. The Wall Street Journal one talks about a healthy a healthy turn or a healthy and talks about the HRAs. We had a big event in the Rose Garden. When it came time for the Q&A, you shouted questions that had nothing to do with HRAs. Kellyanne, Kellyanne, on June 14th. Kellyanne, could you talk about that? I, I wasn't there. More about, I know that, but the president says that a lot of progress has been made. What progress specifically has been made? What exactly? What progress has been made? What progress? You have a you have a president actually willing to. You have this president who heard the last president tell him very clearly. This, as soon as he was elected, I know you were all still in shell shock and under the covers, but shortly after he was elected, he was told by then President Obama 
that North Korea will be your biggest problem. So he heard that, and he took that to account, and he's picked off where others left off, picked up where others left off, and he's trying to bring denuclearization and peace to places around the world where there are dangerous people. Is it his obligation? Hogan just said on Fox Business, it's the president's obligation, or told me this morning. Maybe you said it there. Uh, that, Sorry, I was watching you. I didn't see it. Sorry. And, uh, that he, the president has an obligation to bring peace where he can. The president has an obligation to bring better health care to the 28 million Americans who have none. Uh, years after Obama Biden care passed, nine and a half years. Well, I mean, folks, there are people who don't have what you have. You have health care through your employer. So do I. Don't you care about the people who don't have health care? When the president talks about that yesterday, he is going to. We are we are protecting pre-existing conditions, but we're going to make sure that Medicare and Medicaid are strengthened and protected. Also, we're looking at rural care, travel care, maternal care. Sure. We're the only country. Right, I care about that, but right now, I'm it doesn't about, sound like you do, and I know you don't. But go on. Korea, and the president said that Barack Obama, former President Obama, was begging for a meeting with Kim Jong Un. Uh, former Obama spokespeople, National Security Council people have said that they don't recall that. Ever Are you happened. asking me if President Obama I'm, did enough in North Korea? No, the answer I'm is no. Where he President was Trump lie. asked. I'm wanting to know where President Trump got that from. If either of you know that. She didn't say that. That's just what you did. I, I'm, ask, my sunglasses. I'm asking. I like my where he got that from. That, but. So here's what we know. President Obama got the Nobel Peace Prize, but this president is earning it just by trying to bring peace and to have sanctions on North Korea, to have sanctions on Iran while you're getting North Korea to denuclearize. And if they don't, they don't. But when did Obama beg for a meeting with Kim Jong-un and wasn't able to get it? And they're, and they're, and they're, and look at Iran, look at Iran's economy. This president took us out of a terrible nuclear deal. I mean, we're trying to pick up a lot. The, the batons that were just tossed to the side of the shrapnel that remains and doing a really great job. And this is why, I think, you know, frankly, this is why a, a lot of folks are, yes, Joe? Yeah, I, still, I, I got to follow up on that a little bit. What is the evidence that President Obama ever asked for a meeting with Kim Jong-un? So that's what you care about, right? Because we, no, we got to talk about I'm, President I'm Obama. Up. I mean, but if I mention President but Obama, it's an answer, President Obama. The the no, I answer answer the, I'm answering the question about this president that I work for and his policies with respect to <coughs> North Korea, Iran, and anywhere else you want to talk but about practically. No As you know, I can hold forth on policy. Kelly, and the president raised it, which is why we asked. So is it true or not true? I think what the president is remembering is that when, as president-elect, this that President Obama was basically admitting his failure to do, to, to do enough with North Korea. That's true. And his Secretary of State, the woman who lost the race uh, that you thought she'd win, whose name I won't say anymore, unless you accuse me of still saying her name, her, uh, not with her. She, she didn't do anything either as Secretary of State that was effective. At least we have Mike Pompeo there as Secretary of State as we speak. Are trying to work this out. Why aren't you happy, especially those of you who have children and want to live a long time? Why aren't you happy that you have a president, you have an administration that's actually trying to denuclear, denuclearize? Kellyanne, we were talking about health care a moment ago. On June 14th, the president said that there would be a major announcement in terms of health care in two weeks. Two weeks have passed. What is that major announcement? Do you know what the HRAs are? Do you know what transparency is, surprise medical billing? Is that the major announcement? No, and when I'm will just asking if you're even up on those, because I don't think you cover them at all. I, so, I'm, asking you, I'm asking you a question. Well, those are, ma those are major announcements to the public. We're doing building blocks in health care. When will those announcements and the be president, made then? the president actually, I'm one of the people who works on his plan here. You have a great team, really smart people working on his plan. We'll be with the president today going over pieces of it. Will he be making that we announcement work. today then? Making what announcement? The announcement the president said there was a big announcement in two weeks on health care. He said it more than two weeks if ago. If he wants to, sure he can. Absolutely. And you, for two years, said that there was Russia collusion, and there wasn't. So where's that? I, I did. I think he can have more than two weeks to come up with better health care in a country that where the health care it doesn't even exist he for set 28 the clock million Americans I didn't who rely to. He did. I'm just asking you on know, behalf of Medicare American people. Medicare for All wants to take away your health care and anybody else here who gets it from their employers. 180 million Americans get health care from their employers. The Medicare is meant for Medicare for all be less Medicare for seniors. Medicaid is meant to be for the blind, the disabled, the pregnant women, others who need it. Uh, Obamacare is a huge expansion of Medicaid in, into into all different areas. This president, at least, is trying to improve health care. We're looking. I know Francesca cut me off because we're starting to get a little too complicated here. Too many syllables: tribal care, rural care, maternal care. Oh, she's like, I care about health care, but. And, we, and three of you in a row had to mention President. Four of you in a row had to mention President Obama. The that's president's important. the one who raised President Obama, which is why we asked. So, so I'll raise President Obama's Obamacare. I'll not raise his Nobel Peace Prize. Who cares? Want to talk about his vice president? 
Can I, can I, I didn't see you covering any of those oh, stories. A little bit more news. I, I covered the debate all week. This Thanks, morning, The president has been tweeting about the, the New York governor using allegedly the attorney general there as a bludgeoning tool. What's got the president so upset about New York and the attorney general? The president was born and raised in New York. He was a very successful businessman in New York, raised his children in New York until they came here. And you know what? The fact is the president thinks it's very sad that so many people and businesses are fleeing New York. More about that you can't attract and retain a human talent there, cap human capital talent there, because it's just too expensive for people to live there. That's based on policies. It's in direct contrast to his policies. You reduce taxes, you reduce regulations, you actually explore energy, develop energy responsibly, and look what happens to the Trump economy. Look what's happening in the New York economy. Look at the pickup trucks uh, with the New York license plates over the border in Pennsylvania looking for, for work there, uh, that, that because they actually will develop energy there. So he sees what's happening in New York. I think it's too bad. All my four children were born in Manhattan. I love Manhattan. I love New York. But well, look what's happening to that city. And, and so that's what, that's what he, he's not upset about it. It's just, it's regrettable to those of us who love New York and those of us who live there or raise our children there for a while. It's regrettable, but it's also undeniable. People are fleeing New York. Look at the numbers. And businesses are. Biz what? Businesses are fleeing New York. Uh, and they, they're benefiting from the Trump economy. But when you have these states with high taxes and more regulations, then you, you've, got, you've got problems. People don't want to be there. So nothing can to do with the AG Margaret, coming can out I jump in? Thanks. Uh, Killian, um, I wanted to ask you, or Hogan, or both of you, um, two questions. Uh, and forgive me if this got answered yesterday. Do we have yet um, details on the manifest for the uh, bilat with Kim Jong-un? Was it just he and the president and the translators, or were others in the room at part or all of it? I'll get back to you later on the day on that. I have some information. You do? Okay, do. that'd be great. Thanks, and then sir. also, um, uh, with regard to the July 4th speech, uh, this is just a neutral, fact-based question here. Are we going to get a preview? We'll take this, too. Okay, are we going to get a, a briefing or a preview of those remarks, um, maybe not on camera, although on camera would be great, but I mean, can we get prepared for what he's going to be talking about thematically? It would be really helpful. Thematically, how wonderful this country is, our troops and military, our great democracy, and great call to patriotism, the success of this administration and opening up so many jobs for individuals, what we've done for veterans. Uh, there's no final form yet, but America will hear the whole speech. They're not going to really wait for people to take one little clause out of it, as was your more, as was your question today. How much more is it going to cost to put have the flyovers over the military aircraft, bring up tanks, put them on displays? How much more is that going to cost to taxpayers? Is there an estimate for that? I don't know. You'd have to ask the DOD, I assume. But if you want a list of the things taxpayers actually pay for that they find to be outrageous, I can give you that too. On Huawei, uh, the president over the weekend announced that uh, lifting the restrictions the Commerce Department uh, put in place on American companies selling parts for Huawei. This is the second time that the Commerce Department has uh, imposed a penalty on a Chinese uh, electronics manufacturer uh, for good reason, and the president has lifted it uh, basically at, at the request of President Xi. Why does he keep backing down? <laughs> Why does he? Sorry. This president backs down? Yes. Uh, he did with ZTE, and now he's done it again with Huawei. Well, and you can't have it both ways. Post. First, he's meeting with he Kim Jong-un, and, and he's meeting with President Xi. He's, he won't come up with a, he, he won't agree to trade deals like past presidents have so weakly done so that put us at a humongous trade deficit of half a trillion dollars for China, that screw the American worker, American business, American interests, America. Uh, this is somebody who doesn't back down. In fact, that's usually part of your questions about him. And yet he has twice. No, this, no, the U.S. companies, you want to take that one about Huawei? U.S. companies are still able um, to, sell, to sell the component parts. Yes, and, and well, that's important and to him. That's not backing down. That's protecting America. No, it's not because the reason. Congress yes, it is. Yes, it is. You can have a tutorial on America's greatness if you like, and, and what America first means. It. Same with ZTE, yeah. <laughs> and both times at the request of President Xi, he lifted those bans. And I would like to know why he did it this time, and why does he keep doing it? He undercut. 
I'd like to know, I'm sorry, where do you work again? Because we're all confused about that inside. Is it called Breakfast News? Breakfast News. Okay, great. Awesome. Okay, Kellyanne, a couple of your colleagues have departed or are departing. First, Sarah Sanders, now Mercedes Schlapp. Are you planning to stick around? Oh, you've asked me that before. <laughs> Haven't y'all tried to get rid of me every way you know how? No, I, I, I don't know that sure I've asked you, have. you that before, but I'm, I'm asking Not how back you're going to stick around until the, uh, until the election. I, I, this is my best and highest use for the president, according to the president, so that's my intention. Kellyanne, where do we stand with Jared Kushner's plan for immigration reform? Well, we were talking about that uh, several weeks ago when the president released it in the Rose Garden. Uh, Jared has given some of us an update about what's happening in Congress based on his meetings there. And I'll just give a quick refresher where you can pull up my 20-minute interview with Rush Limbaugh the day the president was in the Rose Garden where I talked exclusively about the plan uh, it, had two compo it, has, it has two components. One is a merit-based system, and the other is full and final border security. We're very happy that the Democrats, after blocking funding 17 times and calling this a manufactured crisis, have uh, so most of them have put aside their manufactured outrage and agreed with the president and, put, and voted in favor of the $4.6 billion aid package. That includes prominent senior Democrats like Chuck Schumer of New York and Pat Leahy of Vermont. They were right there supporting the package. I know some people think they jammed Pelosi on it. I'll leave that to the Democratic Party. They're not my problem. Uh, but we're very happy that this president was able to sign a bipartisan package into law yesterday. And I think it tells you something about the softening of the ground for more immigration reform, in my view, which is to look at this merit, moving to a merit-based system, as most countries have, and also just to have full and final border security. This is humanitarian aid. The president made very clear yesterday we now need border security, as he's been saying all along. He put together his plan a very long time ago. I think uh, in between um, Jared being in Bahrain and, and the G20, et cetera, and the Congress uh, being on recess, I'll have to get a new, you know, a fresh readout. But last week, in fact, last Monday before Jared left, he was telling me about some of his meetings on Capitol Hill and the progress they're making. Do you have any idea when we might expect to see text of that plan? We were told weeks ago that we were given no deadline. I, I can check that out for you. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You let me know when you're going to find collusion and obstruction, and I'll get back to you with the plan. And guys, if you're going to quote to me, I mean, I'm happy to stand here and take your fire, and do that. I'm really trying on behalf of the country that I love so much. But you, you can't misquote the president and then pretend you're facts first. You can't come out here with a little sliver of a nugget. I happened to be there yesterday. I heard the whole quote. And he said, most people, and you haven't disputed it, most people don't want a strong, most people want a strong military. They don't want crime. They want good education. They want jobs. I'm sure they'll come up with a poll which says, no, most people don't want good education. Okay, great. I'd like to see the methodology of that poll. But let's be fair. Let's be fair and open and transparent. It has to go both ways. Thank you.